Hi there! If you want to start making your own Arduino projects but don't know where to get started, you're in the right place. With this mini course you'll learn what's the Arduino and explore the Arduino board. You'll also build a circuit and write your first Arduino sketch. If you stick until the end of the course, we have a free ebook for you. We'll also guide you on where to go next to start building your own projects. The Arduino is a microcontroller platform that consists of both hardware, the Arduino board, and software, the Arduino IDE. That's an Arduino Uno board. It's a circuit board with a microcontroller on it. This microcontroller is the ATmega 328P and it is the brain of the Arduino. You can program it to interact with a physical world like control an LED or activate a motor. The Arduino can also be used to tell what's going on in the world. For example, you can read data from sensors, like this ultrasonic sensor that measures distance, this PR motion sensor that detects motion, or this temperature and humidity sensor. To tell your Arduino what to do, you send a set of instructions to the microcontroller on the board. This set of instructions is called a sketch and you write your sketches on a software called Arduino IDE. Both the Arduino hardware and software are open source. This means that both can be used freely and adapt as needed. For example, anyone can copy the Arduino design and sell their own Arduino boards. And that's what many companies did. So, you'll see many Arduino clones or also known as Arduino compatible boards out there like this same smart Arduino clone. The Arduino clones are cheaper and work the same way as the official Arduino, so you shouldn't have any problem using a compatible clone. There are several Arduino boards, the most common is the Arduino Uno, and that's the one we're going to use in this course. There are other models like the Arduino Nano, Pro Mini, Mega and Wemilanov, for example. All these boards work in a similar way, but each one has different specifications. Some of them offer more pins, others have a faster processor, etc. It is worth taking a look at the Arduino boards page so that you have an idea of the Arduino boards available and their differences. There are also these boards called shields. You mount them on top of the Arduino to give it extra capabilities. Here we have several examples of shields, data logging, Ethernet, TFT display, GSM, motor driver and LCD shields. Compatible Arduino shields have pins that align perfectly on the Arduino top header pins, as you can see. There are also a wide variety of sensors and modules you can use with your Arduino to make great projects in an easy way. The ATmega 328P microcontroller is the brain of the Arduino and you program it to tell your Arduino what to do. The Arduino has two rows of header pins in each side. Here you have 14 digital pins labeled from 0 to 13 that can act as inputs or outputs. Digital means that they only have two states, high or low, which means 5 volts or 0 volts. When these pins are set as outputs, they can output 0 volts or 5 volts. When they are set as inputs, they read voltage. They can only read either high or low. Pin 0 and pin 1 are also called TX and RX pins, and they are used for serial communication. On the other side of the board, you have 6 analog input pins labeled from 0 to 5. The analog pins can read varying voltages between 0 to 5 volts. The voltage read is then assigned into a value from 0 to 1023. You can use these pins to read signals from analog sensors, for example. Among the digital pins, you'll find pins marked with a tile. These pins are PWM. PWM means pulse with modulation and it is a technique to give the impression of an analog output using digital pins. 
Finally, you have the power pins where you have 5V and 3.3V supply and ground to connect your circuits. You also have this pin labeled V-in that stands for Voltage In. This pin can be used to supply power to the Arduino from an external source. Or you can use this pin to get the source voltage equal to the one supplied by the power jack. The power jack is this component here and is used to power up the Arduino from an external power supply. The recommended input voltage is between 7V and 12V. Next to the power jack there is a USB socket. The USB socket is used to connect your Arduino to your computer using a USB cable like this, so that you can upload code that will tell your Arduino what to do. Additionally, the USB socket also powers up your Arduino. This is the reset button. When you press it, the program that is currently running on the Arduino will start from the beginning. You also have some LEDs on the board that give you some feedback of what's going on. The power LED lights up when the Arduino is being powered. The TX and RX LEDs indicate whether there is data being received or transmitted by the board. Lastly, there is also an LED attached to pin 13 that is useful for debugging your projects. The Arduino IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, is where you write your programs to tell your Arduino what to do. The programs written for Arduino are called sketches and are based on the C and C++ programming language. You need to download the Arduino IDE software to your computer. For that, go to the link that shows at the bottom of the video or go to arduino.cc and click the software tab. Choose the right installation file for your operating system, wait a few seconds while it downloads and follow the on-screen instructions to install it. Once it's finished, open the Arduino IDE. Here is where you write your sketches. All of your sketches have this structure, the void setup and the void loop. In the setup, you write the code that you want your Arduino to run once. And in the loop, as the name suggests, you write the code you want your Arduino to run over and over again until you tell it to stop or until you remove power from the Arduino. In the Arduino IDE, you have several examples of sketches that you can use and modify for your projects. You just need to go to File, Examples, and select the example that you want. We're going to start with a blink sketch. Select Basics and Blink. This opens a new window with the example. This code simply blinks the built-in LED attached to pin 13 every other second. To upload this code to your Arduino board, first, connect the Arduino to your computer using the USB cable. Then, go to Tools, Board, and make sure you select the right board, in this case, the Arduino slash Genuino Uno. After that, go to port and select the COM port your Arduino is connected to, it's probably different than mine. Then, just click the upload button here to upload the code to your Arduino board. Once the uploading is done, you'll see a message here saying, done uploading. Now take a look at your Arduino board. The LED attached to pin 13 should be blinking every second. We're going to learn how to blink an LED with the Arduino. LED stands for Light Emitting Diode, so it's a diode that emits light. LEDs have polarity, which means they allow current to flow in one direction, from positive to negative. The LED shorter lead is called the cathode, and the longest lead is called the anode. The anode should be connected in the direction of the positive supply and the cathode to ground. LEDs like these draw approximately 200 mA. So, when connecting LEDs to the Arduino, you need to add a resistor in series with the LED. 
the resistor is a component like this that will limit the amount of current reaching the LED. In this case we're going to use a 220 ohm resistor. Different resistors have different color bands, that's how you identify them. Search on the web for resistor color code to help you identify different resistors. Now that you know what an LED is and how it works, let's make the circuit on a breadboard. A breadboard gives you an easy way to build circuits without having to connect the components using solder, so it's perfect for prototyping. This breadboard has two rails on each side. These are the power rails and are used to connect ground and power to your circuits. In the middle of the breadboard is where you place your components. The breadboard has many tiny holes that are electrically connected this way. Now let's start wiring the circuit. You can pause the video and follow the on-screen schematic instead. Start by inserting the LED on the breadboard this way. Then insert the 220 ohm resistor into the breadboard so that one side is connected to the LED anode, the positive lead. With a jumper wire, connect the other side of the resistor to pin 13. Finally, connect the LED cathode, the shorter lead, to ground. That's it, your circuit is ready. Now you only need to upload an Arduino sketch to your board to make the LED blink. Having your Arduino connect to your computer with a USB cable, open the Arduino IDE and copy the sketch provided. This sketch blinks the LED every other second. These lines in grey color are comments. Comments are plain English or any other language and start with the double slash symbols. Any text after the double slash is ignored by the Arduino. Let's see how the code works. Here we create a variable called LED pin and assign it to 13, which is where the LEDs connect to. From now on, every time you use the LED pin variable, you'll be referring to pin 13. In the setup, this line sets pin 13 as an output, indicating we want to send power to the LED. For this, you use the pin mode function. This function accepts the pin and the mode as arguments, as we're doing here. In the loop is where you'll actually blink the LED. We need to turn it on for one second and off for another second. To set a pin state, you'll use the digital write function and between parentheses the pin you are referring to and the state. The state can be either high, turning the LED on, or low, turning the LED off. So, to turn the LED on, you should write digital write LED pin high. We want the LED to stay on for one second, so we use the delay function here that accepts an integer as an argument. This number represents the time in milliseconds the program will wait until moving on to the next line. Here we're using 1000 that corresponds to one second. After that second is passed, you need to turn the LED off. Once again, you use the digital write function, but this time you set its state to low, which turns the LED off. Finally, we wait another second using the delay function. This part of the code will run over and over again, which makes the blinking effect. Upload the code to your Arduino as you've done in the previous video. Make sure you have the right board and COM port selected. After uploading the code, look at your LED. It should be blinking every second. Now you can play with the delay time and see how it works. For example, change to 500 milliseconds or to 100 milliseconds so it blinks faster. Congratulations for following this mini course. With this video series you've got into the basics of Arduino, but what's next? We have several resources for you and you can find the links for the resources below this video. We'll provide you with 18 plus random nerd tutorials projects ebook for free which is a compilation of several Arduino projects that we've published in our blog. We also provide you with the ultimate guide for Arduino sensors and modules. 
This ebook is also free and contains step-by-step -step instructions, schematics and code on how to use 24 different Arduino compatible sensors and modules. Finally, we have a premium and practical Arduino course with 25 projects from beginner to advanced, with all the resources that you need. Even if you're a complete beginner, you'll be able to follow along and come up with incredible projects. This is just a sneak peek of the modules, but you can find more information on the product page. We hope you find this mini course valuable. As I said before, all the links for the resources can be found below. Thanks for watching and good luck with your projects!